Anna is going to continue. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Talk. So we continue with example. And yesterday we, we saw a flat, a bismuth flat example. Now we will see non-flat example. And the first non-flat example are in the class of compact locally homogeneous spaces. And more precisely, what we have is the compact quotient of a simply connected group by lattice. We take J, an invariant complex structure. As I explained yesterday, that means that J comes from a, 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 let's say, last invariant complex structure on G or equivalently a complex structure on the Lie algebra of G. And what happened here, since uh, this is a compact quotient of a simply connected group by Milner, this emits a bi-invariant volume four, okay? And using this uh, bi-invariant volume four, what happened if you suppose that you have a metric, which is invariant, which satisfies some condition, then using simply the average using this volume form, you have something which is, if the metric is non-invariant, you get something invariant, okay? So you can look existence at the level of invariant case, and you have, a, you have a, let's say, existence at the level of non-invariant, okay? The idea is the following, if you have omega, let's say omega, which is not left invariant, Okay, not invariant, let's say, more precisely. Then uh, using the bi-invariant volume form mu, you can construct a new one omega tilde, which is invariant. That's a play, that's a game. Okay, um, here I will say a few things, what is known for this uh, special type of compound manifold. And the first example were in dimension six, and with gene important, okay? So we have classification results for, let's say, complex dimension phi, gene important. And that is a paper that I, I wrote with Parton, Maurizio Parton and Simon Salomon. And then later, we also get the classification for n equal to four, again in the KG important. And that is a paper with Henrietti and the Tony. And what happened here, that for n equal to three, that's very curious that the condition to have a metric pluriclose, so the existence of pluriclose metric depends only on the complex structure, okay? Um, that's curious. It's also on only dimension three and it's not anymore true in dimension four. What happened in dimension three in other things so that G has to be two step nilpot. What does mean two step nilpot? It means so that if you take the commutator, so if you take G, G, G is just a Lie algebra, let's call G1. This G1 is containing the center of G. And from geometric point of view, what you have is you have that your near manifold is, uh, let's say, the total space of a homomorphic torus bundle over a torus. Um, that appears in dimension, uh, complex dimension three, in the classification that we get in dimension four, also appear that, and we have a conjecture here, 
that for every n, okay, um, if you have a, an n manifold, the case that G is important correspond to the n manifold case with J invariant, emitting a pluriclass metric. It's called this M. Then M is exactly the total space. Like before, holomorphic torus over a torus. This is still an open conjecture. Uh, we show that in all dimension under the assumption. So we know that the conjecture is true for n equal to three. Um, is also true for n equal to four. And we show in general, that's curious, that if you take this, which is always strictly contained in the Lie algebra G, if it is a billion, then the conjecture is true. And this is curious because all the example have this property to have the G1 plus JG1 opinion, but we, we it's still open. We, we don't know, maybe one, one has to find something else, some other assumption. Okay. I want to say a few things also about G solvable. Here, um, of course, solvable is much richer, the class, but on the other way, way uh, to have this uh, pluriclass metric give many restriction on the type of the solvable group that one has. And the first case that we study, this is also related to the, let's say the last lecture, um, is a classification that we get for n equal to three. Okay, so we have gamma over G, J, and we assume that uh, this complex manifold has holomorphic canonical bundle. This is an assumption that we use, uh, we will use for the Strominger, or Hull Strominger system. Um, and so we have holomorphic canonical bundle. So that means that we have a non zero, phi zero holomorphic. Three zero four, right? The canonical bundle is a, is a section, a global section, vanishing holomorphic three zero four, and of course plus pluriclass. So the existence of pluriclass metric, and we we completely classify that. That's a paper with uh, Otal Ugarte. And the way how we get the classification is curious here because we, we really use n equal to three. So we are in six dimensional, real six dimensional. And we look this condition in terms of SU free structure. So we use the theory of SU free structure that's particular for real dimension six. Um, more recently, with my PhD student, we consider another case also. in a complex dimension three. And that's the case that G solvable is almost yeah. uh, What does mean? It means that you have a semi-direct product like R, R5. So you have a co-dimension one, the level of the algebra, you have a co-dimension one, a billion, ideal of your uh, the algebra. And again, we show some classification. Here is nice because there is in the almost abelian case, so there is a nice characterization in general by Arroyo La Fuente. Okay, that's general. Then we use this characterization to classify this case. This is a joint paper with my student, Fabio Paradiso. Um, of course, this is our particular case where G is two-step solvable. So um, 
That means that the, the commutator is, is a billion. And uh, there is, uh, I want to mention a nice paper about two step solvable, a recent paper by Freibert as one, where they, they consider this case using a more general construction that they call share construction. And what appeared that the case is no sense in this more general construction. And I end this part about lo compact locally homogeneous spaces, uh, reporting a result, very recent result, and that will give us an idea how we get this result. This is theorem that I prove uh, with uh, Nicoletta Tardini and Luigi Bezzoni, and it's curious because he's saying that um, if you take G unimodular the group, that means that the trace of that X is zero for any X in the Lie algebra of G. That's a condition to have a compact quotient by lattice, by minor. And then you take um, J, special type complex structure that was considered in the literature for many reasons. Um, I think it was introduced by Dotti Miatello. And uh, it's the notion of complex abelian complex structure. It makes sense only on the Lie algebra case, on the groups case. And uh, say that Jx, Jy is equal to x and y for any x and y in the Lie algebra G. Y is called abelian because if you take, in general, if you take the one zero part of your Lie algebra, this is a sub-algebra of the complexification. In this case, you have G one zero is abelian. That's why it's called abelian, okay? So if you have such unimodular group plus J abelian, and then uh, you have uh, this G pluriclose compatible. Then the, 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 the nice thing here that you get a, a restriction on your G and what you get the G has to be two-step remote. So you go back. G has to be two-step remote. Um, this condition, uh, I don't know if we will have time to see in the lecture, but this condition has a geometric meaning because uh, to have this SKT plus J abelian is related to special property of the Bismuth connection or the curvature of the Bismuth connection because it's related to the property that the, the Bismuth connection is scalar-like. So the, the curvature of the Bismuth connection satisfy the same condition as the Levi Civita connection satisfy in the killer case. Okay, I want just to mention a little bit how, how to prove that, just to give an idea of how to prove this result. So, idea of the proof, sorry. Yeah, of the proof. So, everything is a level of the algebra. So, to use, we need to use that the torsion free form is closed plus J abelian. So uh, the first thing that we did that's easy is to interpret it yes, the level of the algebra. And so we, we get this nice relation. Just in terms of bracket, of course, because you, you, you go from forms to bracket, something like that. And this is a Q part all the time. You, you try to interpret the condition SKT, which is that condition in terms of bracket. Um, so in particular, what you get that was important that um, if you take the norm square of X, Y plus the norm square 
of X, J, Y, you, you just apply the previous equality putting, uh, considering just X, Y, X, J, Y, then you get something like that. Okay, and that's nice because what you get, if you get ever that X is in the center, so this is vanishing, this is vanishing, this is vanishing, then you have that X, J, X is zero. Okay, so um, that's the first thing. And this is on the, of course, in one, in one direction is okay, but you get also in the other direction, you see? Because if this is zero, if this is zero, then you have the sum of two squares. So this is zero, this is zero, but it means just so that X is in the center. So to have an X in the center is equivalent to say that the bracket of X with the X is zero. And then is a crucial point because um, then we, we just reduce everything again to G1 plus JG1, okay? Because what, what we show that this is different from G, that's the first thing. And um, we also show that if this two-step is potent, then also G is two-step important. So everything reduces to show that this one is two-step and important. And this we do by induction. just by induction, because you have a G1 plus JG1, a smaller dimension as a pluriclose uh, metric, which is in use. And then by induction, we, we can, we know that in small dimension, the property is true. So this is just happening important and then you have the result. So it's very nice because the computation are very uh, reduced and you usually use just the algebraic structure. Okay, let's see other example in the literature, not mine, other example, non-flat, non-bismuth flat. Okay, the first type that I want to look is uh, our example that probably also um, Alexandra will see in the talk, our OT, Olecaus to manifolds, okay, which are a generalization in higher dimension of in all Bombieri surfaces. Um, here I just do a few sketch of what is going on. I think she will uh, give uh, the general construction. So the, the idea is the following. You have two, let's say K is a finite extension of Q. Why not? extension of Q, the rational number. So what is called an algebraic number theory, uh, field, sorry. And uh, our manifold will be the contact quotient on this way you take H, S, this H corresponds to take the complex number for which image of the complex number is positive times CT, okay? And then you need uh, some action that is uh, free and properly discontinuous and is given by product of U times, say, O, K, okay? Um, here I just very sketch construction. So U is just a special subgroup of uh, it's called admissible subgroup because give essentially when you take some special projection, give a lattice in some sense, admissible subgroup of the group of let's say totally positive units. Okay. And okay, this okay. Let's call it like that is a ring of 
algebraic integer. Okay. Of course, this uh, acts there on this space, and essentially the action of this of uh, okay is by translation uh, to construct this action. You use embedding that you have. You have real embedding and complex embedding, and uh, this acts by rotation on that. Okay, she probably will describe more carefully the, the stuff. But what is nice here that she found out, so this is uh, the complex dimension, of course, it says plus T, okay? And um, Alexandra Ottiman show that uh, some uh, necessary equivalent condition, sufficient and necessary condition for X, K, U, and meeting pluriclose metry and the nice thing here i think is that, that um, okay i will not write the the, the uh, sufficient necessary condition that you get you can you you can find out are in terms of s for instance s equal to t and and then you have an extra condition that involve the the embedding but what is nice here that you have a section posteriori you have a restriction on the term beta number, B3, that has to be equal to S over three plus S, okay? And especially this restriction, H1 is zero, okay? Um, so it seems that the third cohomology um, give uh, some restriction on the existence of pluriclose. And I want to mention that Kazuya, by a result by Kazuya, OptiManifold belongs, can be described in different way as sol manifold. So also these spaces are again compact portion of a simply connected solvable group by lattice. Another very nice construction in the literature uh, was given by Grancherov, the two brothers, Grancherov um, and Keo Grancherov. And yet some point. And that's nice because um, it's related to the construction of Toros bundle over Toros. Okay, you can generalize a little bit the things considering Torus bundle over Keller manifold. I will explain a little bit how it's constructed the pluriclass uh, metric in this way. And then the nice thing here that they construct this example for any K bigger than one, you have that if you consider K minus one um, as two times as four, uh, connecting sum, K times of S3 close S3, that has a pluriclose metric. And now how they construct this pluriclose metric is a general construction. In fact, this manifold is T2 bundle over a Kelly manifold, which is the blow up over, let's say the blow up of CP2 at K points. And these K points are on a smooth, that's just to have a condition that ensure on the pluriclass condition is again um, a condition in the, let's say in the intersection form, smooth, irreducible, Okay, I just want to mention in general how uh, if you consider the total space, so you have the total space of, let's say, of a Taurus principal toric bundle is sufficient, in fact, much less. 
You just um, have a permission, then one can use in the killer case, but one can simply use permission. And what they assume is the characteristic class, classes are all type one one. So uh, when you take the, the connection one form, what you ask that the curvature uh, are of type one one that essentially because um, if you if you denote that let's say the theta one theta two k a connection okay one form determining the the, the the principal turing bundle and uh, what you ask is okay if you consider the theta j then these are the pullback of curvature alpha j which are 114 okay that's that's what you ask so you need uh, this extra condition and then i will not give all the details but the idea is the following you you it's nice because you start so you have an hermitian gx okay and media okay the, the the way how you construct a complex structure let's go back um it's simple you use the complex structure on x and on the vertical part you you just play in this way you send j let's say theta to j minus one in theta to j Okay, so you have J on the vertical part, J on the horizontal part, and you do the play, you, you have some complex structure that makes the, the pi holomorphic. And if you take JX Hermitian, let's say, then you just define the metric on M, like the pullback of the matrix on X plus the vertical stuff. So let's call it this way L equal to one to K and then you have theta L tensor theta L, something like that. And then of course you just compute omega M and the computation that they did is to find to impose that omega M is EDC close in terms of condition involving uh, the, the metric of course that you have down and the theta I. Okay, that's that's uh, that's uh, the play, and it's nice because in this way they will consider this construction of Taro's bundle of a Keller manifold. We will see again in the last lecture because it's related to the to the uh, Fuyao construction of solution to the half storming system. So it's related to that, and I want just to mention the last let's say type of example, that is again a generalization of what uh, Grancherov, the two brother and Poon did. And is a construction by Poder and Tancor, um, where they construct, they construct pluriclose metric this time on total spaces of principal bundle, you don't have any more torus bundle, but principal bundle over a projective manifold. And uh, what is the structure group? The structure group um, even dimension, even dimension unitary. Special orthogonal for compact symplectic group. And it's nice because, the, of course, they have to impose extra conditions. Okay. And these extra conditions to have pluricloes are in theory topological condition. Of course, are, they are asking some topological condition on, on the total space. And uh, for unitary group, one just mentioned this, for unitary group, the topological condition that they have is C1, 
C1 is the first chunk class, C1 square is equal to C2. And for the other two cases, is a topological condition involving the Pontryagi class. So P1, C2. So again, some topology seems to be, to be involved. Okay. Um, now we want to see how is, how is the behavior of pluricloss matrix comparing with the Keller case. And for instance, what happened with, uh, we show that with Adriano Tomasini that the complex blow up is working well with uh, the pluricloss condition. And that's joint work with Adriano Tomasini. And we show essentially this theorem that uh, the complex blow up. Okay, we know that in the killer case, that's due to Blanchard. Blanchard um, uh, essentially show that the complex blow up of a killer manifold at the point on the long compact complex and manifold, okay, remain killer. That's a Blanchard result. We stand that in the pretty close case. So we show that the complex blow up of, let's say, a complex manifold G really close, the complex blow up at a point of at a long, a compact complex some manifold epsilon remain really close in the sense that you can find a metric on your new complex manifold, which is still pretty close. And I want just to mention the idea of the proof. It's, we, we, it's very similar to the killer case. The, the idea is very similar. Um, so if you have zeta one, zeta n, the holomorphic, local holomorphic coordinate around P, this is just a construction of the complex blew up at the point P. What we have, this is a complex manifold that you obtain a joint, what? Um, a joint to you remove the point to M, removing the point, the following manifold. You tilde, which is just the manifold given by the pair, zeta L in U times CPN minus one, and is the complex dimension on our manifold such that zeta belong to L, okay? And you, to, to a joint, the, the, the M, Remove the point and you tilde, you just use these isomorphisms. So using the isomorphisms, which is given by you tilde, removing zeta zero with you, let's say you, you in the, is the neighbor or the P, of course, they, uh, I didn't mention, but the local coordinate were in the, in some, open set, U, center on P, and this is just given by the projection, this isomorphism, okay. And so we have a projection, okay, which is stand identity on M over P, and the sectional, what we have, that the sectional divisor is just a copy of CPN minus one, and the plan here is to take, okay, let's see that omega is the fundamental form of a pluriclose metric on M. So what you do is to consider 
the pullback over pi at omega. Um, this is uh, as all the property beside the positivity. So is it bar close, pi one one? This is not a problem because pi is uh, holomorphic, so everything is okay, but it's not positive defined. And so what you do is just modify, modify your, uh, your, your form in, in a way, omega tilde, you define omega tilde like uh, p star omega plus something small, right? And the, 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 the way how you construct uh, this extra form C is just, let's say the restriction, C is the restriction of a form over your complex blue up and epsilon small, you have just to take epsilon small in, in order to have this positive and this comma, let's say, is just constructed in this way. P, D, D bar, so is D, D bar exact? And then you use two natural projection. I will explain what I mean. So you have two projection, P1 from U times CN zero, U, and then the other one, P2, which goes from U times CN zero, in Cn minus zero. And that H is just a function having supporting U. So just function having supporting U. You don't want to change the things, okay? In U and then using that tricky, which is very similar to the, the killer case because you add something which is ZD bar exact and you take just epsilon smaller in order to, to get some fully closed metric. Okay, I think I like everything. Um, for the, just few words for the other case, for the complex blow up at a compact, some manifold, compact complex, some manifold. Why? Uh, what you do is again, you have a, Let's denote this with omega tilde. Why the situation is quite similar? You have a homomorphic vibration here from this one, holomorphic vibration, and by construction, you have again a B holomorphism between M tilde Y, removing the sectional divisor. Okay, with M removing Y the same way. This is a B holomorphism. Okay, and this time the sectional divisor is a copy of the uh, predefined or the normal bound. Bundle. And this time, the way how to construct the, the pluricluse metric is uh, use an Hermitian. Let's say you consider the O, P, and Y, M, U. Okay, so the dual of the tautological bundle. And um, you, you consider you start again with omega the fundamental form of a pluricluse metric. And what you do, we use the is a holomorphic line bundle L on the complex blow up along the sun manifold such that L is trivial on let's say in the part that you identify with M removing Y. So on M tilde, the part outside the sectional divider. So they are trivial and such that if you restrict L 
to the sectional divider, you have exactly this. This O. So this is O, P, the projective space, and I over M O1. That's the tricky. That's the tricky, and then you work with the chain form. You can see the form of that. And then you, you, you just modify a little bit the, 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 the chain form, okay? You, you find a new, let's say, a metric structure on N in such a way. So you, you go from this chain form to the new chain forms, let's say beta tilde, um, using essentially what, what, what you use is extend that so is in you you use a trivialization of L, let's say, on, on, on these things. And at the end, what you have is again something like omega tilde. Here I just keep some details, but you, you have again P star omega plus epsilon is beta tilde, which is a transform of the new. And each structure on there with the property in such a way. This is again for epsilon small, this is positive, and this is DD bar close. Okay. And um, what's important to have this property so that the, the complex blow up uh, preserve the pluriclose condition if you blow up at the point on the compact um, complex sum manifold. That's what's important because in this way, for instance, you can apply um, the, the Ironaka, all right, the, the Ironaka resolution for algebraic complex R before, okay, to how to find the resolution, use uh, exactly this blow up. So in some sense, we apply, for instance, this complex blow up to reserve the singularity of special type of complex R before, right? And in this way, we construct simply connected example of compact complex manifold emitting pluriclose metric. And uh, now I want to mention a nice thing, which is an extension result. An extension result that I get with Adriano Tomasini, and is the following. Okay, uh, if you start with a complex manifold, M, complex manifold, dimension to N, and you remove a point, and this has a, a pluriclose metric, then we show that M is also a pluriclose metric. This is a theorem that we show, I show with uh, Tomasini. And the standard previous result that was shown by Miaoka for the killer case. Um, I will give an idea what, uh, what is going here, but to use this uh, to extend. So the, the, the idea is the following. You have uh, some, some uh, DT bar uh, positive, uh, form, right? One, one, form, um, DD bar close, and then you want to extend in all M. And the, the way I will extend is using currents. So I will just say a few things about currents. In fact, one can characterize the pluriclose condition not only, but also the Keller case uh, and the other type of Hermitian connection, Hermitian uh, uh, metric in terms of currents. So just by notation, the note by B, P, Q, M, the space of P, Q form will compact support on your on our complex manifold. Okay, good. And uh, the space, very quickly, let's say what is the space of current of p dimension PQ 
or equivalent B degree, the complementary of that. So N minus B, N minus Q is the topological, it's just a topological dual, D prime, D Q, I will denote in this way, or D P Q, M. Okay, we consider here that the just the infinity topology. Um, so what the first remark that we can do, and that's the link with the form, that the current, if one take a current of B dimension, let's say PQ on our complex manifold locally, can be locally, also only locally, identify with what? Uh, you can take n minus p, n minus q form, right? With the coefficient, not infinity function, but distribution. With coefficient, which are distribution. Okay. So the idea will be to consider the pluriclose, the, the, the fundamental form associated to a pluriclose matrix as a current or special type, we'll see which type, and then to extend to M as a current, and then to change the coefficient in a nice way where the coefficient goes to be C infinity. And then you really get a pluriclose matrix. That's more or less the idea. So one can um, talk in a, using essentially the duality. One can define the notion of real, T real. Okay, one use just the duality with the with the form, and then one can. That's very important to define the notion of three T positive and positive. Okay. Um, for for a real uh, current and the difference between that uh, I just mentioned it that uh, real currents the the notion of positive is just as following if you apply t here I just put the coefficient to to have uh, so t is real or type p. I put this I just to have some for real, and then for any one zero four compass support, you ask that this coefficient times V one, which V P by duality you apply to that, V bar one, which V bar P is bigger than equal to zero. That's the positive case. And in the strictly positive case, it's strictly positive. That's that's the difference, okay, between two fields. Another um, another um, notion that we will use that um, if we have a positive, this remark it will be important. If we have a positive correct of the degree. P, yeah. Automatically, positive imply order zero. Order zero. That means that the coefficient are measured. That's important for us. The coefficient are measured. Okay, that's a remark that we we use, and then. What, what is nice that in terms of current, there are some already characterization, the more important characterization is the RV loson. Characterization of the existence of a Keller manifold on a compact complex manifold in terms of current. In fact, they show, they show that the compact complex manifold, MJ, does not admit a Keller metric if and only if MJ has 
a non-zero positive current of p dimension one one, which is the one one part of an exit current, an exit current. Okay, that's a, the nice characterization by Harvey Lawson. And then later, uh, Alessandrini and Bassanelli um, generalize a little bit that condition, considering also uh, the case uh, of uh, purely closed and more restricted, the case of simplicity form timing J. You remember yesterday we introduced this condition, taming, sim simplicity form, taming a complex structure. And also that condition can be characterized in terms of current. This is, um, was proved by Lucia Al Alessandrini, Bassanelli, and then also by Egidia, I think in his sequel paper. And again, the, we have these two characterization. If we have a compact, again, complex manifold, let's say MJ has no simplicity form taming J in the sense that we say yes, it is. so it means that the, the one part is positive with respect to J, if and only if MJ has, this time we see like positive, we have exact non-zero current of the dimension one one. And then there is also the characterization of the weaker condition, which is the condition to have a pluricloss metric. So compact again, compact MJ is no pluricloss metric. If it only if this time MJ has a positive non zero current of the dimension one one, which is this time is not anymore exact, but this is Z bar exact. So the, the, this weaker, weaker condition. How, and then for instance, there is, uh, I suggest to read the, the proof of that, very nice proof is done in the paper by Verbisky that we consider later. And he gave again a sharp proof of this uh, A and B, which is, which is nice. And um, okay, how we get to this extension result um, we start, I'll just give you an idea how to use that. Um, we, we, we start from this remark. If you have omega, which is the fundamental form of a pluri close metric G on our complex manifold, then how, what we have, we see omega as a current. Omega is correspond to a real strictly positive is not enough. Positive, strictly positive current of degree one one, which is DD bar close. Okay, so the idea is to extend the omega on uh, your, our complex manifold beside the point 
everywhere. And of course, we can work locally. So we can just take an open ball and work on that, a neighborhood of P, let's say, and P uh, correspond to the origin of our open ball. So the idea, so the, I just give a sketch of the proof of the extension. So it's sufficient, the idea is the following, sufficient uh, to show that if omega is the fundamental form of, let's say, a pluriclose metric, omega, uh, not omega, uh, I already say omega. We don't need the name. <laughs> On the open bowl, we can think that the radius is r, small r, beside the, the origin, which correspond to p with n bigger than equal to two. I forgot to, to, to assume that n has to be bigger than equal to two, of course, right? In the theorem, implicitly was that. Then we, we, we just need to show that there is this smaller radius r between zero and r and uh, a one form, let's say omega f, okay? Uh, in a smaller ball, including the origin, which is the point that we want to extend, such that, okay, the first condition that omega et is the fundamental form of a pluriclose metric on the smaller open board, okay? And the second that if you consider on, let's say the analogs, is over something which is smaller, okay? We have omega on this analysis. That's the tricky. We want to extend that. How, how we extend that, how we get this uh, uh, one one form is in the following way. So we start with omega, okay? Which is our fundamental form on, uh, on, on this and uh, we, we just consider minus omega, okay, as a current, okay? What we know about this current? We know that this is real current. Just change the sign. So it was omega was strictly positive, becomes strictly negative. Um, DD bar close. This is preserved current of P degree one one on our whole removing the origin. And here, fortunately, we can apply this extension result. So we apply this extension, this theorem due to Alessandrini and Bassanelli, which is more general. We explain how we apply this. Um, so it's more general. If you take epsilon, the analytic subset in open in CN, if our current T is Pluri subharmonic. That means that if you take E, D, D bar T is positive, not T itself, but E, D bar T is positive, negative current of P 
the dimension pp on our open removing y so the complement to y in uh, omega and that's important the complex dimension of y is less than p that is sanction we have this assumption then there is an extension then there is this what they call I think I lose the connection, is correct? Oh, okay, just start resharing. Okay, let's see. Sorry, I don't know why, but the, the, the... It sometimes happens. It happens, yes, no problem. Yeah. I don't know when exactly, probably I already, I discover exactly when, let's see if it's sharing again. Not too long ago, but when when exactly? <laughs> it didn't pass too much. Okay, no, that's yeah. uh, we maybe I go back here just quickly. So we we the idea is to extend the omega, right? So we consider the minus omega, which is uh, negative, strictly negative, real DD bar groups. Okay, and we want to extend that. So the first thing that we do is to apply this extension result by Alessandrini and Baffanelli. So we consider an analytic subset in an open on CN, and we consider T pluri subharmonic. That means that E D D bar of T is positive, negative current of B dimension PB on the complement of Y in omega, in the open omega. And then we have this essential hypothesis that the complex dimension of Y is less than P. Then what we have by this extension result by Alessandrini and Bassanelli that we have this extension. Essentially, this is defined by extending the coefficient to zero in Y. That's the, one, the, the way. So we will apply that considering, as I say, just epsilon just the, or, uh, the, the center of our ball. So we have T0, we have our extension, T0. On, and what, what we can show, that's a tricky, we can show, in fact, that e, this is not automatically, but in our case, we can show that E D D bar T0 is zero. On, so we have this extension on BNR, and then we show this extra condition. That's the this distinction point. Okay. Um, this uh, we show that because this is uh, we have that DD bar T zero is um, positive uh, and then of order zero, and then also the differential of that is zero anyway. Um, that's a mean that uh, essentially that's for, for that we use another theorem which is called the support theorem and it does for normal currents but i don't want to talk about that let's go on with the proof and then the trick is the following consider omega zero equal to minus let's put to zero up minus d zero because we want and that's what we know about this omega zero. We know that this uh, becomes real positive. We, we lose a strictly positive, but we still have positive. The, the bar 
close current of the degree one one on our ball and is strictly. We know that it's strictly positive on the ball beside the center of the ball. This, this we know. And then we use, that's the more tricky part, because we use another extension, another, not more extension, but in a way to write down our currents is um, a theorem. Here I put the CU and Bassanelli because CU show this for D close case. And then Bassanelli is standing for DD bar close. And this is the following. If you have T current of DD, let's say HK on our open omega, if T is of order zero, that means the coefficient are measured, okay? And E D D bar T is zero, this is the case for our T zero, then locally, that's nice, because locally you can write T as D plus D bar, as D G plus D bar H with, that's nice because you go, from coefficient which are measured to, co to coefficient which are uh, which have coefficient which are locally integrable function with g and h with locally in integrable function as coefficient okay so we can do, we apply this, we, we apply the theorem for exactly our omega zero minus C zero. We have everything or the function are satisfied. So what we have, the property is locally. So we will go to a smaller ball, open ball. So we have the omega zero. Omega zero is real. So G and H are the same essentially. Omega zero is the G plus bar, G bar on some smaller ball. Okay, for so R is smaller than R small. Okay, and G is a current of the degree zero one. Okay, and in fact, what we have that's important, but because we have the G is move from the property that we have before is move on the ball removing the origin. Okay, so now the only work we regular we do a regularization. This is the, maybe the easier part. We regularize G in order to get the new coefficients move everywhere, okay? So in, in order to obtain a DD bar close and positive one, one, four on B on the, our small open ball. And that's that's and the, the, the proof. Okay. Um, this um, the characterization about let's say uh, pluriclose um, the existence of pluriclose metric in terms of currents and to translate the symplectic form, timing a complex structure in terms of currents again in terms of pluriclose allow to, to find some negative result. Now I will present in the last part some negative result that I get. Um, 
this is uh, the first result with Henrietti and that's only, and that's it's, uh, very, uh, uh, sometimes it's hard because usually Neil Merrifold give a, a counterexample on something, are very far to be killer, okay? And Neil Merrifold is killer if and only if, the, the, in fact, it is a torus, right? So uh, we have the same for admitting a, plur, a, a simplistic form taming a, comp a, a complex structure, an invariant complex structure. If we take a company manifold, M, with J, Barrier, then we show that as a symplectic for I mean J, if it only if M is a torus. And here the proof is essentially reduced. It's very important to have the blue close symmetry because what we use, the trick is we use essentially the J preserves the center of the algebra. And another thing so that we use, if uh, any times the center intersection, the commutator is non zero. This is uh, true for all the algebra, not only for uh, an important case, you cannot have a simplicity form time in J. That's what you use. Um, we generalize this result later with a different proof with uh, Kazuya, considering in, instead of the case in many folds, we consider the case where G is completely soluble. That means that the adx has real eigenvalues for any x. Um, in, this is a, the, the way how we show this result uh, is using symplectic geometry, in fact, that's curious. We use symplectic geometry. And um, also for killer case, um, there is a proof that if you have a compass of manifold, this is scalar um, and G is completely solvable. This is scalar if it only if it's torus. Be careful that if G is not completely solvable, then as Ikawa show that you don't have a, a torus anymore, but you have a finite quotient of a torus. That's that's the the result. Um, in the last, I finish with another negative result. That's nice. It's due to to Verbisky. And then I think with this, I finish. Unfortunately, I have no time to talk about pluricloth uh, um, flow, but maybe I would leave here in the slides is contained and maybe we'll go back later, but see. And, but I want to mention the, 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 the result in twist of space, negative result due to Misha, Verbisky. So let's start with M4, we do not just with M, a compact. Imanian for manifold. Um, okay, so one um, what uh, what we will use essentially the the construction of the twist space of M, which by definition is just let's say I would denote by that as lambda plus M. You have the two forms split in the set dual part. Okay, plus the anti cell dual part, we correspond to the, the forms for which star alpha is equal to alpha, and here the two forms for which star alpha is equal to minus uh, alpha. And so here we just take the set of unit vectors in lambda plus the dual form. Um, so here we have alpha just equal to alpha. And what we will use essentially is the space of two form is isomorphic to S, so TM, that's important. 
So because in this way, we can see a two form on M, you can see as an endomorphism, right? Of the tangent space, TM. Um, so um, on this space, on the twisted space, one can define a, a natural, we have a decomposition of the tangent space. So any pair, MS, twisted space, M, we consider this decomposition, the tangent space, we have the horizontal part plus vertical, TS over S lambda plus M over M. This is just induced, uh, is um, induced by essentially by the Levi Civita connection when I talk about horizontal and vertical. So one can define the compensature just like that. You take ES, a complex structure on the on this induced by S, okay, by identification that I got before, plus E of S lambda plus M. And this is the complex structure that you identify. Essentially, you identify this with the two sphere S2. Okay, and this is induced by the metric and the orientation. So we have our twist space with this new complex structure, which is in general almost this I, which is almost complex structure. So it's not integrable in general, but we know by a TH in Singer that this is the integrable. If and only if the, the W plus, so the, 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 the plus part of the Y tensor is zero. Okay, that's the way I want to store that the four manifold is anti dual. Okay, is anti dual. So Verbisky show this is the theorem due to Verbisky. It's a negative result. And they show that if the twist of space with this complex structure of a compact and this is dual, we need that this is dual in order to have a compass manifold for manifold. As a pluriclose metric. Then the twister is scalar. And then by the result by each in is other CP free or a flex space. And here I just finish with the idea of the proof. So it's okay. And um, what's nice that um, he used, that Bisky used the rational. Connectness of twist of space. This is U to Campana. And it says essentially that if the space of the formation of uh, rational curves, which are ample, rational curves is compact, then the complex manifold is moison. So use that, look the, 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 the idea is to look the ample rational curves on that, okay? And look the space of the formation of this ample rational curves. You show that this compass of by uh, result by Campana has to be moison. That means Moyeson, it means that the algebraic dimension of our complex manifold is uh, exactly free. In this case, is the complex dimension of, um, of the, the, the manifold. And that's important because that's implying in particular 
that the, the, the manifold satisfy the D bar lemma or DDC lemma. So that means that if you take a, an exact form, which is also DC close, okay, then automatically is in the image or DDC, essentially is saying that. So our twist space satisfied the DDC lemma. And then one can use, and this is the end of the story, because what one can use the paternal result that say, if you take a known killer, manifold, let's say, a complex dimension n, admit, if this admits, a, an exact positive n minus one, n minus one current, but here I just mean the B degree, then never admit a simplectic form taming J. Okay, so how we get the result? Essentially, we know that this is satisfied with the Uber lemma. Then any exact two to current is the bar exact. And then you should have a twist of space as a simplectic form. But then one get a contradiction with Peterman result. So what happened here that the pluriclose, the existence of pluriclose metric, since uh, it satisfied the DD lemma, also meet a simplectic form time in the complex structure. And then you get a contradiction with this result by pattern and I think this is a very nice proof. I hand here. I have no time to talk about the pluricloss flow. It's on the slides. Next time I would prefer to talk about the simplectic calabria problem. So I finish here the second lecture. I didn't go to overtime, but I use all the time. <laughs> oh, great. Thank you very much. Welcome. No, I prefer to give this result because they're more, uh, let's say, uh, the, the, the pluricloss is also nice, but it's more analytic type. So anyway, it's in the slides. So it's, uh, if the people want to see more about that, they can say, they can see. Oh, may I ask something? We will go back for the balance condition. So I prefer to, 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 to present this. I hope that uh, it was okay. I am sometime too fast, maybe, I don't know. But I use the 20 slides. <laughs> I use, <laughs> yes. You finish all the slides, okay. Yes, um, I finish all the slides and also <laughs> the time this time. <laughs> right, yeah, that's nice. Uh, how was Blanchard's result? It, does it involve lots of analysis? I mean, I'm not familiar with the subject. Well, okay, that's uh, the, 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 the things is that uh, still, uh, I mean, we have this negative result. So all the time that we, we try to, 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 to see the existence of this simplectic form, timing a complex structure, you reduce to this pluriclose condition, right? And in many cases, since the pluriclose form, uh, the pluriclose uh, metric is recitive in some sense. It's not so, I mean, uh, it's uh, weaker than Keller, but it seems that uh, combining is quite restrictive. As soon as the, the manifold is, uh, let's say, um, more uh, specific, then you get extra, so it's still open, these things. And also what is open, I didn't mention, the, for instance, it's not clear if the, uh, the if you take the uh, the class, the Epli class, I didn't talk about the Epli homology and so on, but one can define the Epli, the Epli class. In the slides, there are more details. The Epli class of Omega, Omega define Epli class. And one can uh, use the Epli homology instead of the usual homology that you use for the killer stuff, right? You have a cone. You have the applicone, positive applicone. It is not clear, for instance, if the class is trivial or not, right? In the care case, the, the important thing that the, 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 the two form cannot be exact, right? In the compact case. For pluriclose, 
you have the, 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 one, the omega is defining a pre class. That's true. You can take the corn, for instance, Sri Tentian define this flow, which is the pluriclass flow, is preserving the pluriclass condition. And you can play very similar to the Kellerich flow until some point. So you get some results. Some, but then the, the, the essential thing that we don't know if the class can be trivial or not. Even when you, you have um, a simplistic form taming the complex structure is not clear, other extra property. Okay, we know that in that case, the um, uh, what I wrote, right? The, the bar omega is the is graph. We know that, but it's not enough, it seems. So, so that's, uh, that's it's completely open. And that is fine, it's, it's strange because we will see in the last, uh, lecture that there is another conjecture which is related that is the combination of the existence of a pluriclass metric plus other type of metric which is a balanced metric that's also tricky because if you have both then you have a game killer so it means that this pluriclass condition is some sense um, it's weaker than killer but it's it's tricky. It's, it's not clear what is going on. So that, and there is sometimes you get some obstruction. For instance, h one choose equal to zero, right? Like in the OT manifold, and um, the, the the Alexander Ottiman showed that in that case h h two one is zero, and um, there is a paper, nice paper by. Um, Cavalcanti that I didn't mention, where he studied Hodge theory for this pluriclose metric. And he has some result about the formation in the case that H, um, some cohomology, some Hodge number zero. So um, Cavalcanti tried to see if there were some restriction in terms of Hodge number. He tried to define some Hodge theory for this SKT. But also in that case, you cannot have. Uh, you, you, you get, for instance, some non-existent result for Talabi Ekman manifold. I didn't mention Talabi Ekman mm -hmm. um, cannot have a, a pluriclose unless you, you have S1 cross S3 or S3 cross S3. But in the other case, you don't have pluriclose metric. So that's, that's another... Mm. It's, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, I mean, it's curious, but there are many, many stuff that one doesn't know, especially for maybe some, maybe there are, uh, maybe it's true in general. This, for instance, is also related to special type of generalized scalar that we don't know if there are non-clear examples. Um, so maybe one conjecture can be, but nobody proves, that the manifold has to be formal, maybe, I don't know, or to satisfy the DD dilemma, but this is not clear also, yes. Okay, yeah, I didn't talk about the pluriclass, but it was impossible using the, the black, I prefer to concentrate on this, on this for past, for first part, because it was more, more geometric than the second one, which was more analytic. But uh, there are many, also open problem related to pluriclose flow. That's because it, it helps for instance a little bit to understand the classification of complex surfaces of the class seven that is missing. They try to, to see what is going on in that case because compact complex surfaces always have a pluriclose metric, right? So in that case, maybe okay. can have. But at the moment, the streets, uh, uh, streets work quite a lot using pluriclose. Also, Mario Fernandez recently, for instance, they study this case um, when you start with a bismuth flat manifold to see how, how is uh, the behavior for the um, pluriclose. Uh, because the uh, things that we, we don't know is the time of existence of the pluriclose flow in general. There is a conjecture that I mentioned in the slide. It's confirmed, this conjecture all the time, which is similar to the keller ritchie flow, but there is no general proof for that. Uh, the behavior is a little bit different from keller ritchie flow in general. So it's, it's not clear. 
Yeah, it's a <laughs> yeah. So any type of complex manifold, compact complex manifold, where one can study this type of uh, metric, I think can um, can give an uh, an idea how how can be the the behavior in general. Maybe yes. All right. Thank you very much. Well, for the nice lecture. Thank you. So.